Hi, and welcome to JavaScript Mastery. In this short video, we'll go through some of my favorite Visual Studio Code extensions. These are my personal favorites. If you use any different extensions that I don't mention in this video, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Let's kick it off with a really cool and useful extension that you probably didn't know existed. CodeTime is an open source plugin that provides programming metrics right in your code editor. After you install the extension, and you can install it like any other extension in this video, you can go under the extensions tab and then just type the name of the extension, but I will also leave all the links in the description down below. So you can type code time, see it here, and install it. Afterwards, in your code editor, you will be able to run command shift P, and then you can type code time. In here, you can choose whether you want your information to be displayed inside of your browser or directly inside of your code editor. So let's see the metrics inside of our code editor. Here you can see how many hours have you coded today, 90 days average, live share, and also information about uh, lines of code, lines of code deleted, characters, keystrokes, keystrokes per minute also. Yeah, it's, it's really a lot of metrics also for the last week. And here you can see information about directories you're working on. Also commits, 90 day averages and stuff like that. But here is everything black and white. If you go to code time again, by typing command shift P and typing code time, you can go to software.com to see that representation uh, in your browser. In here, uh, you will get a vivid representation of your coding metrics. You got code time summary, weekly code time heat map, 90 day rolling average, weekly commits, weekly additions and deletions, weekly top files, and really a lot of stuff that you can, that you can track over here. Code time is really useful if you're wondering or you're required to know how much time you actually spent coding. Let's move on to a few visual extensions. The first one on the list is OneDark Pro. OneDark Pro is Atom's most popular team and it is one of the most downloaded themes for Visual Studio Code ever. As you can see in this example, we have icons for directories like client and server, as well as for the files like .eslint, uh, .gitignore and package.json. In this example project, we can see that specifically for React in the source directory, uh, there are directories like components, util, and styles, let's say, that all have their corresponding icon. OneDark Pro saves you a lot of time searching for some files and makes your code editor look really nice and clean. The next one on the list is Bracket Pair Colorizer. This extension allows matching brackets to be identified with colors. It is extremely convenient when you have deeply nested objects or functions, as we will show right now. So let's create a object example, for example, and it is going to have a nested object with one more nested object with one more nested object. As you can see here, let's say it, it has colors equal to gray. As you can see here, it is really easily noticeable that this one is closing this object here and this one is closing this object here, as it wouldn't be if we weren't using this extension. This can also be shown easily if we type just three pairs of brackets here. Notice that we can use normal brackets as well as curly braces and array signs. So it is really easily noticeable where, where is the opening brace and where is the closing brace. Color Highlight is the next extension on the list. It allows you to type RGB, RGBA or hexadecimal or any other color codes and it shows you a visual representation of the color. So let's get back to our editor and instead of colors here we can create an array with different hexadecimal values. So let's say FFF is white. We can do F2F which is purple and you can play with it by just typing different color codes. As you can see here, you can directly see colors so you don't get confused with RGB or hexadecimal values anymore. 
it's really simple and convenient one. From the visual extensions, we can move on to more practical ones. Bat IntelliSense is the one that is really practical, as especially if you are working with uh, React or any other modular type of JavaScript. So let's say you want to import something. And with this extension, let's say you want to import everything as utils from and now. When you type that slash, it automatically advises you what files are there. So I want to go to slash client, slash source, and then slash util. As you can see here, I didn't have to go to directories and search for different directory or files names. I can just easily go move further to directory tree and find the files that I was looking for. Easy as that. Um, next is the extension on the list is really cool. It is also really practical if you're using React, Redux or stuff like that. So it is ES7, React, Redux, GraphQL and React Native snippets. Uh, quite a long name, but trust me, it will save you a lot of time, especially with React. This extension provides JavaScript and React Redux snippets in ES7 with Babel plugin features for VS Code. So let's see what it can do. You can type simply command shift P and then type ES7. Press enter and you will be able to see all the short commands that you will be able to use with this extension. As you can see here, they, there is quite a lot of them. But it is also cool that you can actually type what you're looking for in words here. So let's say uh, functional, functional component. Press enter and you get your React boilerplate for functional component immediately. You, we can go to snippets again and say like component class. In here, let's say you get your component class imported with React component and exported really easily and nice. You don't have to press command shift P every time. I just show you, you can do that till you learn some commands. But when you actually learn the commands, you can type them more easily right inside of your code editor. For example, uh, RCEP will simply provide you with React class component with prop types included. So as you can see here, we get like 20 lines of code in four letters. Uh, FRE will simply do a for each loop, convenient. CLG will do a console.log. Uh, IMP will provide you with a simple import statement. RX stands for uh, Redux. And if you type RX action, you will be provided with a simple boilerplate for actions. And RX reducer simply creates a boilerplate for reducer. As you can see, you can play with a lot of commands here and you can learn them, write them on the paper, and then you will get used to writing those and it will really speed up your workflow of working with React, Redux and stuff like that. The next one on the list is Git Lens. Git Lens Supercharge. Git Lens supercharges the Git capabilities built into Visual Studio Code. So just by clicking, let's say we go here and inside source, index.js, inside of here, just by clicking on the line of code, you can see who edited it. It was me. When did he edit it? Five months ago. And in what commit? So it was first commit of this whole project. Also, if you click on uh, here, you can see all the different things you can do with, uh, with Git. So you can open changes, open file, open revisions. You can also see who did it, in what commit. Uh, you can also open that commit and do stuff with it. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.